Hey everybody, I just wanted to start with a quick addendum to last video. Uh, at Mr. Chef mentioned that I didn't elaborate on how AI enemies can act as gear checks and resource sinks, but I want to really briefly touch on that at the start of this video, just in case anybody else is wondering. When we talk about gear checks, we're talking about enemies being able to cause extra problems if you don't pack things for them. The easiest two examples I can give you about these would be sniper scavs in Tarkov or immolators in Hunt. Sniper scavs spawn in elevated positions and they'll target you from really far away, and they're really hard to spot due to that distance. An average experience in Tarkov might be you loading in with a shotgun, and then a sniper scav starts shooting at you halfway across the map. If you spawn in with just a shotgun, it's going to be really hard to take care of these sniper scavs at 100 meters with just buckshot. So in a gear check term, you could say it's optimal to take in some weapon that can cover close range and long range, just to have the option to fight these guys. In Hunt, emulators are an enemy that's super aggressive and is basically just a flaming zombie pressure cooker. In their normal state, they'll just chase you down and bully you. However, if you break their skin via gunshot, stab, wound, or cutting, they will detonate and cause a huge loud explosion, which will cause them to ignite and become even more aggressive. They can be pretty annoying and dangerous to start off, but there are plenty of ways to kill them that don't involve the explosion, namely dealing blunt damage or poison damage. Making sure you have some way of taking out an emulator without causing an explosion is a core part of your loadout that you have to factor in when building a loadout for PvE. Now, being a resource sink just means that the AI is trying to make you use up resources. Taking damage from them makes you use healing items, killing them makes you use ammo, and it also all eats up time that could be spent going somewhere else, looting, completing a quest, or running away. Even just equipping items to deal with them takes up resources in terms of the slots of items that you can bring in. Typically, as you learn more, become better at the game, or learn to pack better, you can become more efficient in managing AI, which will free up your inventory space, make sure you're more supplied, and make sure you're not pinned down in the middle of a gunfight. If anyone has any further questions about these points, just let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do to help you guys out. Welcome back, runners. This is part two of our discussion about the fundamentals of extraction shooters. So if you missed part one, check out the playlist below. Today, we're going to get deep, dark, and dirty with the final pillar of extraction shooters, the gameplay loop. From your first game to your last game, this is what you're going to be doing every match that you play. As I mentioned last time, there's four steps to this loop. Allocating assets and resources, setting and completing objectives, surviving and extracting, and finally debriefing in the main menu. I'm going to get you on board with these concepts in this video by going over some examples in Hunt and Tarkov, as well as looking at how they might combine and manifest in Marathon itself. Step one is allocate your assets and resources. This is where we're going to build our loadouts. For the most part, your resources are finite. We don't get to create a class and get duplicated gear for 27 deaths over the course of a game. Here, every item has its cost, it's lost on death, and there's repercussions for putting 15 flashlights on your AR-15. You have to decide how much you're willing to put on the line every time you make a loadout and go in. But don't worry, even if you lose everything and end up being totally destitute, you'll be able to make use of free loadouts. Now, don't expect to clear the map with these things, but everything you make with these is going to be totally profit. And to be fair, have you seen the cheap weapons in these games? They are still absolutely lethal and can definitely get you a few extractions. Let's take a look at what it might look like to make a loadout in Hunt and Tarkov. Now in Hunt, as of late 2023, all the base versions of weapons are unlocked at level 1. All you need to worry about is having the money to buy them. Using a weapon will progress its upgrade path and unlock you different ammo types and variants. These variants can be things like conversion kits, suppressed versions, versions with bayonets, versions with scopes, or a full auto drum mag Mosin the gun. Any of which might fit your playstyle better than another version. You can carry two weapons of varying sizes or multi use replenishable tools. These will be things like med kits, hand sized melee tools, flare guns, traps, etc and four one-time use consumable items. These would be things like grenades or intravenous drugs. Remember, you're trying to cover close and long range engagements and maybe some PVE in there. So your loadout might end up looking something like this. Once you have a loadout that you like, you can save it for the future and quick buy it. Also in Hunt, you do have to buy your characters who are lost on death, 
But if they survive a game, they'll gain experience points that will go towards unlocking perks that can further enhance or define your playstyle. In terms of totally free gameplay options, you will have at least one free hunter after every game you play. These hunters will come with the essentials of a med kit and a melee tool, as well as a serviceable set of weapons, possibly some consumables, and one perk. For Tarkov, vendors will sell you new gear after you meet certain level, quest, and transaction requirements, and you'll start with some weapons and ammo in your inventory. The loadout screen isn't too far off from Hunt in a general sense, but it can still be very confusing to new players. You still have the option of bringing multiple weapons and consumables, but you'll also need to buy magazines for your weapon and ammo for those magazines and Google what the stats are for that ammo that you're buying for your magazines. You'll need healing items, bandages for bleeds, splints for fractures, painkillers for various debuffs, armor to try and increase your survival rate, helmets to make sure you probably won't die to a single headshot if it's to the back of your head. You'll need headphones so you can hear the game, a rig to put your mags and meds in, a backpack to put loot in, and any attachments and replacement parts that you need for your gun. Oh, and you'll probably need some keys too. Yes, that's a lot of options for you to pick in Tarkov, but it's not really important if you don't totally understand it, because I'm trying to teach you about Marathon, not necessarily Tarkov. I just want you to see what can be done in terms of customization in this genre. As for free loadouts in Tarkov, you're looking at your scav. Doing a scav run in Tarkov is like being Harbinger in Mass Effect 2. You get to yell, I am assuming direct control before you spawn into a game as a randomly generated AI enemy. Whatever that AI enemy can spawn with, you'll spawn with. And that's all you have unless you can scavenge more items on the map. Thankfully, other AI will see you as friendly as you're going about, so you'll only have to worry about other players. Just don't shoot another scav, because then you will be a target for like the next three games. If you're loading it on a scav, you are just trying to make it out with as much money as you can to make as much profit as possible for your main character to go back in. Now, looking towards Marathon for just a moment, the lore that we have is that we are basically going to be using remote-controlled plastic drone bodies in-game. So I'm hoping to see something a bit closer to Hunt in terms of free options, making normal progress with free loadouts, and an easy to understand and optimize loadout system. Keeping this part of the game short means that you can jump in the games faster and worry less about the details. Just equip and play. Now that we're all geared up, we can move on to the next step, which is setting and completing your objectives. Both Hunt and Tarkov have in-game objectives that you can go towards, which are usually the most direct path for progressing quickly or gaining money. In Tarkov, we have a quest system that will ask you to go out and complete various tasks. These can be things like collecting 20 cigarettes, filling five scavs, marking three trucks, etc. Now, Hunt works on a bounty system, as in you go in as a bounty hunter, just like every other player, and you are chasing down a PvE boss that will drop certain items when you kill him that will grant you a big bonus of XP and money if you extract with that item. Now, these are the main ways to play the games. However, you can really do whatever you want. Tarkov will let you run around and chase down other players or AI so you can farm their loot. Or you can sit up in a nice tower and role play as a sniper, taking out unaware loot pinatas, I mean players. Or slink your way around the map nabbing loot like a little loot goblin. If you really want, these games can be horror games. One of the funniest things you can do for totally free is load in totally naked and run around using the voice chat to yell at people and run away. What are they going to do? Shoot you? Now, Hunt does have a little bit less freedom. It really does push you for PvP by putting the vast majority of your XP and money behind filling or extracting a boss item. But you totally can load in and just look for cash registers and saddlebags or maybe get into one team fight and loot some money off them and leave. From what we've heard in the marathon Vidoc, Bungie seems to have items called artifacts laying around that can be picked up and combined to sell for higher value, as well as a plotline about the Tau Ceti colony and what happened there. While we can't yet say for sure, it seems like they're leaning more into the Tarkov style of quests and being a little bit more free in your objective choice. Hopefully this will mean that running around doing some PvE and chasing down some AI enemies will be a viable loot source and won't lead to your death 95% of the time. Of course, we don't know the depth of these mechanics yet, but you'll want to keep an eye out for any kind of news in that area. Whenever you feel like you've met your objective or can't keep going, that's when we move into the next step of Survive and Extract. Now, I consider this to be a distinct step in the gameplay loop, as other than a match timer, there's nothing saying you have to extract. You have to decide when it's time to go, what extract you want to go to, and how you're going to get there safely. Will you push for more loot, or try to make it out and bank what you've already got? That's the question that these games want you to constantly ask yourself. It's about the constant fear of losing your loot, your loadout, your payout against the curiosity of what you might gain by pushing that other player. 
I'll tell you a secret though. There's only one correct answer, and that's whatever's going to be more fun for you. No one can really tell you that you're choosing to play the game wrong if you just want to scream a battle cry and charge two other teams who are in the middle of a fight when you've got a full backpack. Just the same as no one's going to tell you you're wrong if you found some good items that you want to keep and choose to extract. At the end of the day, it is a game, and the biggest factor to enjoying these games is getting over the fear of losing. Even if you're not afraid of losing, you will still get stressed when you're running to extract trying to get away with a big ass bounty and there's two teams chasing you down the hallway and you can hear them following you. And you'll still feel the rush of adrenaline when you bust a door down and start spraying shotguns into a room full of people. But if you aren't stressing out about your KD or your profit or your survival rate, it becomes a lot easier to enjoy the moment to moment in these games. And that's why I wanted to touch on those free loadouts earlier. That said, if you want to earn money and buy expensive things, you will have to extract at some point. But to do that, you just want to check your map and stay on your toes as you head to extract. In Hunt, as soon as you load in, you can check your in-game map and you'll see three little arrows on the edge of the map that'll be your extracts. Whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and just pick one to go to and try to find the best route there. You can stand around the exit vehicle for about 30 seconds. As soon as you survive that long, you're done. In Tarkov, depending on the map and where you happen to spawn in, you will have a list of extracts that are eligible for you to take, but you'll either have to wander around or Google a map of the map that you're on that shows you all the extracts. You only have to wait about six to eight seconds to make it out. Don't stress too much once you're there. But before you extract from this video, in the next video, I'm planning on taking a look at Bungie as a developer, as well as information about the original Marathon trilogy. We're gonna be looking at that and seeing if we can kind of parse out what kind of gameplay, setting, and plot we might be running into with this game, as well as what Bungie the company might mean in terms of monetization or general feel of the game. But please go hit subscribe and the bell if you want to get notified when any of that goes live, as well as if you have any questions after this, go ahead and leave a comment down below. If you're looking for a real easy step though, this is it. Debriefing in the main menu. Now that your game is over, you can look at all the cool things that you did, see your XP roll in, see how much money you've made out of that game. This is your chance to take a breath and think about the match. Think about if you could have done something to take less damage or if you could have brought something in that would have made everything easier. Think about maybe if you left a gap in your loadout and there's a way to fill it. Sell anything that you don't want to keep, see if you completed any of your quests and challenges, and buy whatever upgrades you can. And that's all you're really looking to do in an extraction shooter. Plan, play, learn, optimize. It's not always easy, but even if you fail at any point in this loop, there's always a chance to recover, have fun, and make some progress. You can load into these games with nothing on, rush to the nearest lootable item, die, and still make it out making XP and money for later. You could sneak up to a dead enemy and take their garbage weapons and go on a tear through the map, fight your way all the way to the top, and extract making tons of money when you didn't think you would. It's really about finding your way to play and then improving that play style until you're able to make a profit with it. In Marathon, Bungie really is talking about making winning what you make of it. They've been talking about leaderboards, puzzles for a plaque with your name on it, but if you just have fun loading into a match and chasing down as many AI enemies as you can before somebody finds you and guns you down, then go for it. You'll probably have more fun and you'll you'll find a way to make a profit off of it and maybe even take down some of those players while you're doing it. From the way they've talked about Marathon, it sounds like they want to have a lot of ways for players to express themselves in game. That's all for today, runners. And remember, in the heavens, they are waiting.